This is MikeBot. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, installation, and demo, as well as a configuration of Creality CR Touch Auto Leveling Kit. So there's two different versions of this. There's the BL Touch and the CR Touch. The CR Touch, I believe, is made by Creality. It's their official version. It's got a metal pen. I think it's a little bit heavier duty from what I saw. It weighs a little more. Seems like a more quality product than the BL Touch, considering they're both the same price. So I figured I'd give this one a try. I know the BL Touch is a lot more popular for the auto leveling kit, but I I wanted a metal pin. I don't like the plastic pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and start unboxing this, and then I'm gonna do uh, a video of me uh, installing it into my Ender 5 Pro. So the box is pretty uh, tiny, as you can see, like not a very big box at all. All right. Let me just put the camera up here. So as you can see, it's a very compact kit. You got the instructions here. There's, uh, I think, three different brackets for all the different printer types. So one, two, three. You see our touch itself, which is really small and light. I didn't realize how tiny it was. And then what else do we have in here? We got a cable, a few screws, and twist ties. And that's pretty much it in the box. I expected there to be more, but I guess that's all you need. So, First thing I want to do is I want to unwrap this cable and see how long it is. I hope it's long enough. I hate these twist ties. Come on, get out of there. Okay, so it does look like a fairly good length cable. Feels, uh, I don't know if it's worth 80 bucks. Anyway, I guess time will tell. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and raise my camera up a bit. All right, so one thing I wanna mention is I do have a 32-bit board, so I did buy the 32-bit board edition. So now I just need to really figure out which of these brackets will fit. So I'm pretty sure it's this one here, because as you can see, that's the uh, pin setup that adjusts accordingly. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit difficult filming this and doing it at the same time, so I'm gonna try my best. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna see how this mounts on. I'm not sure exactly, so I don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start by removing the uh, fan here. There's one screw. There's two screws. And the fan comes off just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the exact same screws this uh, came with. But before I do that, like I said, I wanna mount the device so it looks like it just mounts, where's the camera? Just mounts like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it first onto the, uh, onto the uh, bracket. So you wanna make sure you line up square, square. And then I want to look for the pack of screws for it. It looks like it'll be the little guys here. And then I will mount it onto the back of the, uh, the extruder there. So I'll just line it up, grab my Allen keys. All right, so I've gone ahead and mounted it on like so onto the bracket. Make sure you use the shorter screws when you do this because the longer ones are going to be needed here because it's going to be adding the extra depth. Um, this is for the 32-bit board, by the way, which is the one I have. So now that the actual uh, touch is on there, I figured it'd be easier to do it that way. Uh, you want to go ahead and line the, all the holes up, grab the longer screws that came in the package, and line them up and screw them in. It's the top screw. Now I'll do the bottom one. Sorry for the camera angle. I couldn't... Uh, See properly. Um, it's really hard to work with tiny screws like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and plug the uh, 
top portion of the cable, sorry, the top portion of the cable, the small end, into the uh, CR touch. I will work on rerouting after. So it does have a little clip on the end here, so it only goes in one way. And I will reroute it shortly. All right, so now I'm gonna flip the machine over and I'm gonna try to do this this way. So I will back up the camera and then unscrew the bottom of this. This will be my first time ever opening up the bottom of my Ender 5 Pro. Make sure you hold the bottom uh, plate. Cause I don't know if there's any cables hanging. Sure enough, there is. I will set it like so. All right, here comes the tricky part, the cable routing. I'm just gonna snap some pictures of my board here. Cause like I said, it's my first time opening it up and I wanna have it for reference. But basically you're going to be, so it is a 4.2.2 .2 board. So basically you're going to be plugging it in to right here. Um, this is not gonna work out very well. I will post a picture in this video to show you where exactly that it's gonna go. Okay, so there is a hole at the back of the unit. I will also post that picture and that's basically where you wanna route it. So once you've routed it, you wanna put it into the board. It only goes in one way again. Okay, so I've plugged it in. So while you're down here, you're also supposed to look for the Z, the Z limiter, I think they call it or something like that, uh, and disable that plug as well. Then I'll be taking pictures of all this and uploading them with this video as well. So it's called the Z end stop switch. So I need to locate where that is and unplug the Z end stop switch. Okay, so I've put the BL touch in its place, which is right here. And then I removed the Z limit switch. The end stop switch. So mine were hot glue gunned in. I don't know why was very, very annoying. I'm assuming it's the manufacturer I bought it from, Comgro. Like, don't do that, Comgro. Seriously. Okay, so I think that's it for this part. All right, so now that it's all in there, uh, it feels good. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the cover. Just wanna ensure that doesn't touch any of the, uh, the fan here. So I'm gonna just pull it so it's tight. Like that. If I didn't mention this already, I'll mention it now. Make sure it's turned off and it's unplugged. You don't want any power going into this thing while you're working on it. All right, so that's it for this part. Now I'll just push this back into place like so. Now I will start the cable management. So for cable management, we take the zip ties, so I'll start at the bottom, work my way up. Okay, so next part, you wanna flash your firmware. I've already gone ahead and done that ahead of time. I've gone ahead and put the firmware on the SD card and put it in the Ender 5 Pro. The firmware on this is the uh, BL Touch No Adapter firmware. So I'm going to be turning on my machine and waiting for the firmware to flash, which takes about 30 seconds typically. So once you see the Ender sign, that means it's ready. There it is. So now the firmware is flashed. So now I just want to make sure that the firmware is on there properly. So we check by going to About Printer, look at the version. So it's version 1.1.1. That's uh, in comparison to the firmware that I have downloaded. And uh, we're all set to go. So now we move on to the next steps. So 
So now I will plug the back of that power cable back in, hit the power switch. See your touch lit up right away. And now I'm just gonna go into the settings. Typically you can't see these because the camera doesn't like picking it up. Let me try turning my extra lights off. So I'm gonna go prepare. Try auto home, see what happens. Okay, so you can see when I clicked auto home, you see our touch is working right away. Perfect. All right, now comes the setting part. So you're gonna need a feeler gauge and it needs to be at 0 0.1. So from here, I am gonna go ahead and click menu, prepare, move axis, move Z. And then I'm just gonna start moving it up That's until it's 0 0.01. Okay, so that's it, that's 0 0.01 from the feeler gauge. So from here, input the Z-axis compensation value. So try not to kick my camera around. So now I'm gonna go repair, auto home. So now that that part's done its thing, Going next to set home offsets. No, that's not what I wanted. Prepare, move access, move Z. Okay, so basically what I did here is I went to uh, auto home, then I went to control, I went to the Z axis, I made sure it was 0 0.10 uh, millimeters away. So the next step from here is I need to go to uh, control, bed leveling, and then level bed. So as you can see, it's going through its uh, bed leveling process. I am getting an error too far on my uh, display. So I'm just gonna let it finish do its auto leveling process here. Once that's done, I'm gonna, I've just turned on my uh, Octoprint server. So I'm gonna do a, a test as well. Just to see if it works. Okay, so it looks like it's done its leveling thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open my Octoprint server up right now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead to my Octoprint server and uh, send a test to this. So I'll let you guys keep an eye on this. The test print over from Octoprint. Now it's just a matter to see uh, what happens. This is the moment of truth to see if the simple settings I did figured it out. If not, then that means I have to do some adjusting. So to me, it looks like the nozzle's not close enough. So I will have to do some adjustments. All right, in typical Creality fashion, the instructions are absolutely terrible. So I'm just trying to figure this out myself. So basically I did auto home. Once I did auto home, it was like 0.12 away. So I auto home uh, was set. After auto home, I went to the um, uh, move Z axis and I moved it uh, so it was zeroed. After that, I went into control, bed leveling, probe z offset and i took my feeler gauged and uh, kept moving it around until it was tight so for that that was negative 0.3 for me so now that i think i figured it out i'm going to go back to my octoprint server and uh, from the octoprint server i'm going to send uh, another print over here and see what happens so uh 
before that, I just need to go to my temperature settings because for some reason it didn't save my last configuration. I like to do the nozzle at 200 and the bed at 70. That's what I've had the most success with. And I will uh, turn fan speed off because that causes clogs. Main store settings. People screen. All right. Um, I'm just going to preheat PLA again, so it takes my new settings. Repair, preheat PLA, check. Why is it not saving my settings? Oh, I know why. I didn't uh, do the preheat PLA configuration. Preheat PLA configuration. There we go. Set the fan to zero. Nozzle to 200. Bed to 70. Store settings. There we go. Okay, now I'm off to my Octoprint server. So, wish me luck. Okay, sent the configuration over. Now I'm just going to wait for the bed to heat and see what happens. So in a nutshell, I'm going to keep tweaking this thing. So I've given you guys basically the basics. We've installed the CR touch. We've cabled it. Uh, I've done some rough cable patching on it. Uh, I've gone ahead and adjusted the settings a little bit. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot more to tweak as uh, time goes on. But basically, that's the gist of it. So, uh, so far, I like the device, I just have to figure out how to tweak it properly. Is it a good buy? I think so. It's been I've been having on and off issues, hit or miss issues with the uh, leveling of the bed and everything, so I'm gonna give it a shot. So, uh, like usual, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I don't work for these companies, I do this because I'm a nice guy and uh, I, I appreciate the community that I'm trying to build and the support I'm trying to build here. Mike Bot here with some quick editor's notes. So I ended up returning this CR Touch. It drove me nuts. Two days of headache after headache. Couldn't get a single print to go. Couldn't get anything to stick. It drove me nuts. If you have more patience, go ahead and purchase this thing. Otherwise, if you go with manual bed leveling, much, much better. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you all for watching today. Mike Bot out.